Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and this is a second topic on algorithm analysis wherein we are going to be taking a detailed look at the three different types of time complexities and the three different types of analysis that we do which are denoted by these three different notations as you can see on the screen the big o notation the omega notation and the theta notation now before we start off with this tutorial if you don't know what algorithm analysis is or why do we need algorithm analysis make sure you watch the previous video in this data structures playlist if you want i'll link that video in the video description or you can also see a card on the top right corner because in that video we took a very detailed understanding of what is algorithm analysis what is asymptotic algorithm analysis why do we need it we also saw what is big o notation and how we can calculate the big o notation ourselves so if you are not really sure about this entire algorithm analysis topic just make sure you watch that video that will clear out many of your doubts and if you are only particularly looking for the three different types of time complexities then this video is just for you make sure you watch this video till the end and everything will be very clear so with that being said let's get started so let's start off with the very first type of algorithm analysis that is the big o notation and starting off the big o notation specifically describes the worst case scenario so it represents the upper bound running time complexity of an algorithm so what does this mean so on this right hand side you can see we have a graph on the x axis we have n value which is basically the number of steps and the y value is or the y axis is the time in microseconds or any units of time okay so whenever an algorithm is running obviously it will take some amount of time and algorithm analysis in a nutshell is basically us trying to find out that behavior as to how the algorithm behaves basically in terms of time given a certain input so for example if the algorithm requires 10 steps and it is taking 10 seconds this is just an example what happens when those 10 steps are multiplied by 2 what happens when we have 20 steps then what is the time taken is it 20 which means it would be a linear time basically this graph is actually showing a linear time scenario only so you can see as the n value increases so n is basically the number of steps it can be 10 20000 and so on and so forth as this n value increases the time taken also increases in a linear way it's a straight line right so this function is a linear function and that's why it is known as linear time complexity so this is something that we already saw in the previous video but how does it look like mathematically because when we are doing algorithm analysis obviously we want some numbers we want some mathematical denotations and that's what algorithm analysis is actually and that's where the functions come into picture and these notations and representations so when we are specifically talking about big o notation we are just representing the upper bound or the upper time limit which is basically the worst case right upper time is basically you saying that your algorithm will take maximum y minutes for x number of input this is what basically you are trying to see that your algorithm will not go above this limit so this is the worst case that's what big o notation is so how does it look like mathematically so here we have let f and g be functions of n so you can see f of n over here where n is a natural number denoting size or steps of the algorithm so they are saying f of n is equal to big o of g of n if and only if f of n is less than equal to c into g of n where n is greater than n not c is greater than 0 and n0 is greater than 1 now obviously when you read it for the first time you feel like what is this what is this going on because these mathematical notations are really tricky to understand at times when we see it at the first time and when we are a beginner right so let's try to break it down let's try to understand this in a simple way so this definition is basically saying that a function f of n which is this function or you can see this behavior linear behavior over here f of n is equal to big o of g of n so g of n is some other function so we have f and g right so this is some other function so this g of n can be considered as a upper limit of this function f of n that is what big o notation is right the upper bound so it can be considered as a upper bound or upper limit of f of n if and only if that is only if this function value is always less than or equal to c into g of n so c is this constant so it's a constant value and when you multiply it with this g of n function it is always equal to the function or greater than the function and n is obviously greater than n0 so after a particular n step this equation holds true or this condition holds true 
and c is greater than 0 because c is a constant number it's a positive number and and n0 is always going to be greater than or equal to 1 because n0 is some number of steps now number of steps in an algorithm cannot be less than 1 right in any algorithm you have some positive number of steps you cannot have negative number of steps so that makes sense now to understand this even more better let's take some example some function examples let's say f of n is equal to 2n plus 3 okay so this f of n is equal to 2n plus 3 let's take another function g of n and let's say this is only equal to n now what we want to prove is when we multiply a particular constant c into g of n it is always greater than equal to f of n after a particular value n which is greater than n0 okay so how do we go about this so for g of n that is equal to n to be big o notation or to be considered as the upper bound of our function 2n plus 3 what it has to be it has to be multiplied with a constant c and it has to be always greater than or equal to f of n so let me just write down 2n plus 3 over here so lhs is f of n should be less than or equal to some value of c into what is g of n into n okay so let's consider c equals to 5 all right and let's start off with n equals to 1 because as i mentioned n has to be some positive number because n represents what the number of steps in an algorithm and obviously every algorithm has some number of steps you cannot have a zero step algorithm right i mean you can have a blank program or blank algorithm but obviously it will not do anything so we'll consider n equals to 1 so let's substitute these two values so when we substitute n over here it would become 2 into 1 which is basically 2 so let's write 2 itself directly 2 plus 3 should be less than equal to what is c 5 5 into 1 Now you can see that we are getting phi on the LHS less than equal to phi on the RHS. Now phi is obviously not less than phi, but it is equal to phi, which means our condition is satisfied. So on the graph, what will happen is we will have a additional line or additional function which would represent c into g of n. Okay, so c into g of n can be represented on the graph somewhere like this. Okay. so this will represent c into g of n provided c value is phi okay and for all values which are n equals to 1 or above n or above 1 basically so n to infinity so if you say n equals to 2 what will happen if you substitute 2 over here we will get 2 into 2 which is 4 plus 3 which is equal to 7 and on the rhs we will have substituting 2 over here c is phi phi into 2 we will have 10 right so obviously 7 is less than 10 which means again this statement is satisfied right so basically what we are saying is this g of n is upper bound or big o notation of f of n so ultimately we are left with o of n because g of n what we assumed is n right we assume g of n as n so this c is just a constant so ultimately our function 2n plus 3 has a big o notation of O of n, so this is what we proved, and this is how the graph would look like. And this point over here is where n zero would be equal to one. Okay, so after one, this line, that is this yellow line, c into g of n will always be above our function f of n two n plus three. If we take c as four, let's assume the constant c as four. Okay, so c equal to four and n equals to one. So now if I substitute n as one, so this LHS would be five. Less than equal to c is four and n is one, so four into one four. So now four is obviously not greater than equal to five. You know five is not less than four, right? So now the condition will become false. But what if we increase the n value to two? So now let's substitute these same values. So when I say n equals to two and c equals to four, so n is now two, okay? So two into two is four plus three, which is seven. And on the RHS, c is four. Four into n is now two. Four to the eight, so now we have eight, which is greater than or equal to seven. It is actually greater than seven, right? So now the condition is true, which means when the c value is four, the n value has to be two. So now n zero would be two. So after every value of n which is greater than n zero, so n zero now has become two. So for every value of n which is greater than two, our c into g of n will always be greater than our f of n, right? So that is what. n0 denotes so the n0 denotes that point after which our upper limit is always going to be upper basically 
and it is always going to be above our function over here it is below the function right you can see the white curve is above but after this point c into g of n is always going to be above f of n so this basically proves that this g of n whose value actually is n is basically the upper limit that is is basically the big o notation for our function 2n plus 3 now the next question arises that why did we exactly do this right now the reason why we did this is because we wanted to find the upper limit once we find the big o notation or upper limit we can say that this 2n plus 3 will always follow this behavior now big o of n is usually denoted as linear time so as the number of steps in the algorithm increase or the number of input size increases the time will also increase in a linear way it will not grow exponentially now we can also bound or we can also consider g of n as n square let's see how that would look like so now what if we take g of n as n square okay so this is basically quadratic time and now we will again take this f of n as same so for g of n which is n square to be big o notation or upper bound of our original function f of n it has to again satisfy this condition we have to have a constant which has to be multiplied with g of n so let's again write them 2n plus 3 should be less than or equal to c into our g of n and in this case g of n is basically n square now let's assume c equals to 1 and let's start off with n value as 1 so substituting n as 1 we have 2 plus 3 which is equal to 5 on the LHS what is g of n n square so n is 1 initially so 1 square is 1 c is also 1 we have 1 over here so this is not true right 2 plus 3 or basically 5 is not less than equal to 1 okay let's increment the n let's now take n as 2 now when n becomes 2 we have 2 into 2 is 4 2 into n right so this is 4 plus 3 which is basically 7 let me just write it over here itself 7 and on the RHS we have n square so n is 2 so it becomes 4 and c is 1 only so still 4 is not greater than 7 or 7 is not less than 4 so again this is also false let's take n equals to 3 now n is 3 2 into 3 6 plus 3 9 less than equal to c is 1 so 1 into g of n is n square basically now we substitute 3 over here so 3 square is 9 so now you can see 9 is equal to 9 so now it became true and now if you substitute 4 as n this this side will be 16 right so let's do that let's take n equals to 4 what is 2 into 4 8 8 plus 3 is 11 is 11 less than equal to when substituting 4 at n square it becomes 16 yes now 16 is greater than equal to 11 it is actually greater which means that now as the n values increase after 3 all the values of n will satisfy this condition so this point over here is n0 point which is equal to 3 so for n which is greater than 3 or equal to 3 and when we consider c equals to 1 which is greater than 0 obviously c is greater than 0 all the values will satisfy this condition which means that we can conclude that this new g of n which is n square is also big O notation is also upper bound for our original function 2n plus 1 so we can also say n square and n square essentially would look something like this on the graph it is basically exponential it is a curve so this would be c into g of n square basically and originally in this c we were assuming c as phi so let's keep this phi and this is basically 1 so now you will say okay so even this n square is also upper limit or can also be considered as the upper bound for this original function f of n which is also true but when we actually try to find out the big O notation what we have to do is we have to find the closest one which matches the f of n so over here I have a chart which basically denotes the time complexities in their mathematical terms in a particular order so this one represents constant time then we have log n so these are all behaviors on the graph okay so they all look different on the graph we have n over here which is linear and we have n square over here so n square you can see obviously is greater than n it is on the right hand side now we just proved that n is also a upper limit for our original function 2n plus 1 so we have to take the closest one which is which is actually n only so this is o of n it can also be o n square for this 2n plus 1 but as i mentioned we have to take the closest one okay 
सो दिस वॉज बिगो नोटेशन और द वर्स्ट केस सिनारियो नाउ लेट्स सी वॉट इज द बेस्ट केस सिनारियो विच इज द बिग ओमेगा नोटेशन ओके सो लेट्स सी वॉट बिग ओमेगा नोटेशन इज सो बिग ओमेगा नोटेशन स्पेसिफिकली डिस्क्राइब्स द बेस्ट केस सिनारियो नाउ इट रिप्रेजेंट्स द लोअर बाउंड रनिंग टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ एन एलगोरिदम सो इट्स बेसिकली जस्ट अपोजिट टू बिग बिग ओ बिकॉज बिग ओ वॉज द वर्स्ट केस बिग ओमेगा इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई दिस ओमेगा साइन गिव्स द बेस्ट केस सो बेसिकली इट टेल्स यू वॉट इज द फास्टेस्ट टाइम बिहेवियर फास्टेस्ट टाइम और बिहेवियर बेसिकली इन विच द एलगोरिदम कैन रन ओके बिग ओ वॉज सेंग वॉट इज द स्लोएस्ट टाइम और वॉट इज द वर्स्ट टाइम बिग ओमेगा विल टेल एस वॉट इज द फास्टेस्ट योर एलगोरिदम कैन रन गिवन अ पर्टिकुलर सेट ऑफ इनपुट और साइज ऑफ इनपुट सो हाउ डज इट लुक लाइक मैथमेटिकली बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली वी नीड सम नंबर्स वी नीड सम इक्वेशंस बिकॉज यू आर डीलिंग विद ए सिमटोटिक एनालिसिस विच इज मैथमेटिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो अगेन वी हैव सम कंडीशन सो वी हैव लेट एफ एन जी बी फंक्शंस ऑफ एन जस्ट लाइक वी डिड फॉर बिग ओमेगा वेर एन इज नेचुरल नंबर डिनोटिंग द साइज और स्टेप्स ऑफ एलगोरिदम नाउ अ फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एन इज इक्वल टू बिग ओमेगा ऑफ जी ऑफ एन सो वी हैव अनदर फंक्शन जी ऑफ एन विच कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज बिग ओमेगा ऑफ एफ ऑफ एन इफ एन ओनली इफ आर फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एन इज ऑलवेज ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू दिस जी ऑफ एन विच इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय अ कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू वेर अगेन एन इज ग्रेटर देन अ सर्टन वैल्यू ऑफ एन नॉट सी इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो एंड एन नॉट इज ग्रेटर देन यूर इक्वल टू वन ओके सो दिस एसेंशियली इज गिविंग अस द लोअर लिमिट एंड ऑब्वियसली जज बाय रीडिंग द मैथमेटिकल कंडीशंस ओवर योर एंड दीज इक्वेशंस इट डजेंट मेक एनी सेंस राइट सो लेट्स टेक द सेम एग्जांपल लेट्स अगेन डिनोट एफ ऑफ एन एज टू एन प्लस थ्री ओके सो लेट्स कंसिडर एफ ऑफ एन एज टू एन प्लस थ्री नाउ अगेन वील टेक जी ऑफ एन ऑल्सो एंड नाउ जी ऑफ एन वील रिप्रेजेंट इट एज द सेम वन दैट वी डिड इन द प्रीवियस वन विच इज टेकन बाय एन so for g of n to be big omega of our f of n our original function f of n it has to follow this or it has to satisfy this condition so f of n is 2n plus 3 2n plus 3 has to be always greater than or equal to a constant c multiplied by the assumed g of n which is n now let's take c equals to 1 and just by looking at it when we substitute 1 over here it would be 2n plus 3 greater than equal to n now obviously just by looking at this equation itself you can say that 2n plus 3 is always going to be greater than equal to n for any value of n starting from 1 right if n is equal to 1 we substitute 1 over here we substitute 1 over here it would be 2 into 1 plus 3 so obviously it would be 5 which is greater than 1 if you substitute 2 also this would be 2 and this would be 2 we will multiply 2 into 2 4 4 plus 3 is 7 so 7 would be obviously greater than 2 or you substitute any value of positive integer of n that is a steps number this equation is always going to be satisfied which means basically we already have proved that this g of n can be considered as big omega of our function 2n plus 1 so how does that look like so the way it would look like on the graph it would be something like this it would be again c into g of n so this is that c into g of n and this time c value is 1 okay and not 5 when we take c value as 5 it would be above this function but when we are taking c as 1 it is always going to be below the g of n and this n not value is basically going to start from 1 itself so this is n0 so for all values of n which are greater than or equal to 1 this equation holds true when we have g of n as n and f of n as 2n plus 3 hence we can say that this g of n which is equal to n is big omega of f of n okay so we can say big omega of n because g of n is n and we can say that this is the lower bound for this function which is the lower limit so this was big omega which gives us the fastest time generally we are not really interested more in the fastest time we are more interested in the worst case scenario because we want to test our algorithms for larger inputs and we want to see what is the worst time it will take only then we can make other decisions in the further process so this was big omega so now let's see the last one that is theta or big theta notation what is that also before going to the big theta notation again we just found out that the big omega is big omega of n for this given function but it can also be something which is lower than n now in this map or in this hierarchy you can see that what is lower than n square root of n log n and constant time 
so constant time would look something like this it would be a constant straight line and even this can be considered as the lower bound for f of n right because you can see it is never going to be above our f of n but again we have to take the closest one to our original f of n and the closest one to the original f of n is g of n which is n only so we have to always take the tightest bound to get the closest match okay be it on the upper bound or be it on the lower bound okay so let's move on to the last notation so the last notation is known as big theta notation and big theta notation specifically describes the average case scenario so basically it gives us the most realistic time complexity of an algorithm because not every time your algorithm will perform the worst or not every time the algorithm will perform the best right in real world scenarios your algorithm will fluctuate from the worst to the best right so we need a center value we need a average case and that's where big theta comes into picture and usually big theta is used when the best case and the worst case of certain algorithms is the same okay that's when the big theta is used so for some algorithms the best case and worst case are different for some algorithms the best case and worst case are the same so you'll see that when we actually move ahead in this tutorial series when we actually calculate these different notations for individual alg algorithms if you want that you can let me know in the comments and we can do that for individual algorithms okay but mathematically this is how the big theta looks like so let f and g again be functions of n where n is a natural number so this g of n can be considered as big theta of f of n if and only if there exist two limits so we have c1 into g of n which is less than equal to f of n but we have c2 into g of n which is greater than f of n so you can see we are basically bounding the upper and lower limit over here and our original function is in between so again let's consider the same f of n equals to 2n plus 1 and g of n to be considered as n now just by looking at the graph itself we actually have the two values of c1 and c2 right c1 would be this the lower limit because c1 into g of n should be less than or equal to f of n so c1 has to be 1 and this has to be c2 right so c2 has to be equal to 5 so let's just substitute these values into our original equations over here so in between we have 2n plus this is actually 3 and not 1 so 2n plus 3 c1 is 1 and g of n is n so 1 into n it should be less than equal to 2n plus 3 and 2n plus 3 should be less than equal to and c2 is what 5 so 5 into n so if we substitute n equals to 1 let's start with n equals to 1 so this would be 1 which is less than equal to 2 into 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5 which is less than equal to when we substitute 1 over here 5 into 1 will become 5 so this is true so if we have n equals to 2 again if we substitute these same values so 1 into 2 less than equal to again we are substituting 2 over here so 2 into 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7 which is less than equal to 5 into 2 is 10 so for this also it is true so hence we can say that g of n is theta of f of n okay so for this function f of n equals to 2n plus 3 the big theta notation is n so theta of n because g of n is n right and we are saying this g of n is considered as big theta of f of n when these conditions match and these are matching over here we've just proved it mathematically so this was the average case scenario okay so this basically was the average case scenario which gives us the realistic time the average case scenario okay so these were the three different notations and one last question that you might have in your mind is how does it look like in real world scenarios and why do we have three different cases and i did mention that some algorithms have different best case and different worst case so that's why we have to calculate them individually and some of them don't have so how does that really look like can we have an example so let's see an example so last question that we have is why three different analysis let's take an example by now we've understood that big omega is the best case big o is the worst case and big theta is the average case so here's an example we have to find the best case average case and worst case of linear search algorithm now if you don't know what linear search is we've already talked about it in this data structure series you can check out the entire playlist course and you'll find the linear search we also have written program for it and basically we have an integer array of n numbers let's have 5 4 1 7 20 11 dot 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 so on and so forth and 
at the last we have 100 okay this is the nth term this is the zeroth or basically the first term our index start from zero right so our linear search basically will start from this location it will move on to the next move on to the next till we find the match so let's say we want to find out the value is equal to 5 so when you want to find out the value equal to 5 you can see if you see this array which has n elements the value is at the very start only at the zeroth index so in the loop when we are searching through the array it will take only one single iteration to find our match and then our algorithm will exit so this basically is the best case right so for linear search the best case is constant time essentially right so you can say big omega of one itself because in the very first iteration we got our output and the algorithm stopped but not everybody is as lucky as us right so that's when the worst case comes into picture what if the value that you want to search is not phi the value that you want to search is equal to 100 so it's not phi it's equal to 100 now if you see the array we already know the 100 is at the last position so our search will start from zero it will go to next it would go to next it would go to next it would go to next and it would have n iterations because 100 is the nth item so after n iterations finally it will find a match so you can see our algorithm had to run for n times now this n can be thousand also right you can have set of thousand elements or size of array can be thousand it can be ten thousand it can be lakh and if that element is at the end of the array it will have to run for all the different locations and it have to search for all the different locations so that is the worst case so the worst case can be considered as o of n right because it is at the end of the array list so you can see we have two different time complexities the best case is constant time one because our element to be found out was found out at the very first when we want to find out phi but when we want to find out 100 it is at the very last so that's the worst case so it has to iterate through n elements so big o is n so what would be the average case now the average case can be obviously easily understood by taking a mean of them so mean point will be the midpoint so it would be n by 2 right so essentially it would be something like theta of n by 2 but when we consider time complexities in a asymptotic notation we do not consider constant values so we eliminate all the numbers we only keep the variables so this would also be theta of n only so the average time and the worst time pretty much matches each other but the best case you can see is 1 so that's what the difference is all about so this is the omega notation so you can see we had two different values and hence we had to find out the different cases and all these cases help us in doing the proper bounding of our actual function whenever we say bounding we are defining the upper limit we are defining the lower limit and then we can be rest assured that our algorithm will behave in those limits only it will not take more than the big o notation worst case or it will not be faster than the best case it will pretty much be somewhere in the average case so that's why we have three different analysis so yeah this was the three different time complexity notations the big o notation the big omega and the average case big theta notation i hope you've got a very good understanding of these three different notations if you have any queries you can always put them in the comments if you've understood this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was if you want any more explanation and that's it for this video guys i will see you in the next one peace